Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're talking about the Cold Steel Twistmaster from back in the 90s. So how this story was, uh, my friend Corey texted me a picture of one of these. He said, dude, you got to check out this knife. It's awesome. I'm like, yeah, I've seen it. It's, I think I have one still in the collection. He's like, really? I don't think I've seen a video on it. And I said, I must have a video on it. So I looked through my videos and I tried some different keywords and I just could not find a video on it. Now, I, I never made a dedicated video on this specific knife, but I know I've shown it in multiple videos. It's just, I have random titles and I show all kinds of stuff in videos that don't necessarily have to do with the video. <laughs> so, uh, I figured I'd make a separate video on just this in case people have not seen it before. So a little blast in the past. Now I have the Openal out here because the Twistmaster from Cold Steel is essentially an Openal. Cold Steel and uh, Lynn Thompson have um, mimicked pretty well-known designs. It's not the first time I've seen this. I mean, off the top of my head, um, the Okapi. You know, that particular knife is a very traditional style knife. They made their own version. I think it was the Kudu. Something like that, but um, but yeah, so I mean, it's not like they're stealing the design. They're just making what they feel is a better version of something that already exists. So they made a, a beefier version of the Openal. So the classic Openal knife here from France, okay? This one happens to be a number eight, all right? And let me unlock that. This one also happens to be in stainless instead of carbon, all right? So... On these uh, open knives, if you haven't seen this, it's like a bolster lock, or at least that's what I've always called it, where this entire piece here rotates. Okay, so let me zoom in in case you haven't seen this. Most of you have, but there's always new people to the knife world every day. All right, so this whole collar here rotates. All right, in this case, once it's open, it rotates so that it cannot fold in anymore. Okay, so now you can put pressure on the back here and it doesn't fold. This is locking the knife open. All right, when you're done using it, you rotate this back to clear the channel. All right, and then you can close it. And on the specific openals, there's a cutout on the bottom of the bolster so that once it's closed, you can rotate this again, and this keeps it from opening. It locks it closed. So it locks it open, locks it closed. All right, very cool. And again, this one's a number eight. There's many, many different sizes of openals, different blade shapes, and both carbon steel as well as stainless steel variants, okay? Different types of wood as well. A lot of them are beech wood. So that is the classic openal, right? Let's put that off the side. So Cold Steel came up with their version of this knife, all right, in 1994, I believe. I wrote it down on a piece of paper here in the back. I think 94, for my very quick research, was the um, the initial year that the Twistmaster was available. All right, you can see the Twistmaster logo right there. All right, buy Cold Steel, registered trademark, right in the handle here. All right, and uh, they basically just copied the design. Now, the one difference you can notice, the open all fans out there will notice right away, is this does not have the cutout to lock the blade closed. All right, so you cannot lock it closed, although it's not a big deal. It doesn't fall out. These are usually pretty stiff. But we're going to open this up, and then we rotate the collar there. And in this case, you could rotate it either direction to lock it. Now, i got to come in real close to show you this, but you can see how this is a gradual slant. So as you're rotating this, all right, it's rubbing on the bottom of our blade, okay? And if you really crank that down, it just has nowhere to go. There's no wiggle room. So that the more you turn this, the tighter it's locked. These little protruding bumps here, that just gives you grip, okay? So when you're locking this, it's not super smooth. Now, I never had a problem unlocking or locking an openal, okay? There is kind of a bump there, but it's polished, it's smooth metal. It's not as easy, I suppose, especially if they were dirty or a little rusty or whatever. All right, so that, that little addition was a nice addition to this design. All right, so once it's locked, we can see we have our knife here. This one just has a little lanyard on the back. Has that, um, you know, craton handles, lots of grip, unlike the, the smooth wood. So it's like the, you know, tactical version of this knife. All right, so we go into the blade here. This one's well used. All right, you can see it says Carbon V, which was their trademark name, you know, for some of their steel and of course made in the USA. And on the back, we have nothing, just a sterile blade. All right, so super simple. And I printed out um, from one of the forums, this is an old photo bucket picture, as you can see from the watermark here. <laughs> but these were the, the different offerings, okay? So there's two different blade styles, the large drop point, they had a medium drop point, then they had the medium clip point and the large clip point. 
All right, now there was a lot of variants over the years. You could see this clip point here. This is the original blade shape. This is not reprofiled or anything, but the picture shows more of a swoop. All right, this one has more of a straight drop on it. Okay, so again, just over the years, different variants on this. And then you can see on top here, they had a Tanto version as well. And the Tanto was, you know, black colored. So the large Tanto and the medium Tanto. So those are all the actual model numbers in case you wanted that for your, you know, uh, records there. And here's the breakdown for the specs. All right, large Tanto, four and three quarter inches, six inch handle, 10 and three quarters overall, one eighth uh, thick, 5.3 ounces, and so forth for all the models. So I just wanted to show this just for reference. All right, you see Zytel handle, carbon uh, V for the blade. All right, so there you go. That is the Cold Steel Twistmaster. That's really just all it is. It's the, um, you know, Cold Steel version in the 90s of the Openal. People love the Openal. Cold Steel said, we're going to make our own version of it and beef it up a little bit and try and make improvements. And they did. You know, I mean, it's a fantastic knife. If you ever get a hold of these, any version of it, it's a really nice knife. And if you can't get a hold of it because it's more expensive, way out of production and harder to find, uh, get yourself an Openal. Now, Huge difference too is the blade grinds, blade steel, that does make a difference. Openals are very affordable knives. Now, I haven't bought an Openal in probably, I want to say at least three years. So you can let me know if they up their prices quite a bit, but um, they used to be very, very affordable. Most models were sub $20 or at least sub $30. Just depends on exactly what variant you got. But the number eight, number nine, those are the most common sizes a lot of people like. But they make, you know, tiny ones. I have a set, you know, they have a big old one all the way down to a little keychain that doesn't even lock. So, I mean, they have every every version you can imagine, depending on what size and, and style you might be going for. But if you've never had a traditional French open knife, you are definitely missing out. There's no pocket clip. There's no cool frame lock on here. It's a very cheap, traditional French knife design, but it works well. And these things come razor, razor sharp. And because they're a nice thin blade, they stay very sharp. Fantastic for food prep and everything. Just a super, super cool knife. So as far as, uh, you know, knife collecting goes, if you've never had an open hole, you, you really are missing out. I think it's a must have. It's one of those bucket list type things, which is very easy to obtain because they're very available and very affordable. All right. But if you have an open hole and you love it and you happen to be a huge cold steel fan, but you didn't get into cold steel until, let's say, 2000 or 2005 or 2010 or 2023, Whatever the case is, you never knew this existed, now you do. That's the point of the video. So hopefully you guys have an awesome day. Let me know down in the comment section if you ever have one of these or still currently do. Just an awesome knife. So that's it. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.